Welcome, everyone. This is Documentation Office Hours Asia. It's the 30th of June, 2023. Thanks for being here. Today, topics include Google Summer of Code, open pull requests of interest with one specifically about Kubernetes, and I'm out of office for two, two weeks during July and wanted to talk about what we do with the meetings. Any other topics you want to put on the agenda? Looks good to me. Okay, yeah. there was one more pull request of interest. Mark, uh, resolve the conflict and merge changes in an old PR of Meg's. But unfortunately, it's still not resolved any of the other questions that were there. So let's ah. let's start with Google Summer of Code. So Chris, are there any specific topics you wanted to bring? Um, yes, I want to bring up the midterm presentations and evaluations. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's um, the, the presentations themselves are next week. But I think for the evaluations, it start in July, mid-July. And it, uh, it's due on um, July 4, 14th or 15th, depending on where you are, I think. Okay, so I do from the mentors to Google, or no, from the lead mentor, right? Because it's only we are only allowed to submit one single evaluation to the, the yeah. Okay, so to to Google, and you say that was July 14, twenty twenty three. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so well, lead depending on, depending on where you are. Right. Okay. Of each project to Google. Okay. Good. All right. So see the webinar announced uh, by Alyssa Tong for next week. I've still got to sign up for it. That's good. All right. Jenkins online meetup. Let's embed a link to it here because we should be able to find it on the meetup page. Okay. Virtual meetup group here at no that's not it interesting what would fix this sorry what was your comment chris i think i think we need to fix this link because so yeah i agree but i'm i'm curious why it doesn't work because i thought it was working huh yeah. i don't know search okay so let's oh oh maybe i need to log in first just a moment oh, could be a... i don't know why i would need to log in but maybe okay jenkins it's not i don't care about near loveland colorado let's look near london oh. london uh no uk there we go this okay. one okay there it is now the question is why didn't that that's exactly the same url huh okay now now back to sorry i've got to understand why this okay i click this and it now works. it works okay so you must be logged in apparently i didn't realize that weird okay all right now i need to attend okay good so here's the event all right good so we're scheduled for this next week and the webinar link will be inside the uh event somewhere or she will have already placed it there great okay all right and then chris you so that covered the presentations part now the evaluations part there it's that the mentors need to agree on their evaluation yeah um before the deadline right yep. so hey and do we have a sample of the uh the evaluation questions etc or is that something you only get to see after 
the the evaluation period is opened. I think we can access the evaluation questions now according to Google. So that's okay. All can. right. So should I open up the Google Summer of Code site? Uh, yep. Summer of Code with Google. Okay, here we go. And if I log in with my account, okay, here I am. And in my profile, Twenty twenty three. I'm listed as a mentor. Okay, yep. so so maybe now... to um, go go back to the button on the top right hand corner and okay. click. On, so click on uh, the the green yeah that one. Okay. I think it should be a bit. Um, and if I look at program details, or maybe, should I look at my uh, projects? Manage my voice always. Sorry, say that again, Chris. Uh, it should be manage proposals. So the one next to it. Yeah. Next oh, one. oh, manage proposals. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Even though I'm accepted. Okay. So like I, if you go to any one of the projects you're mentoring. So okay. So let's see. This would be well, but but see, I was expecting oh, this yeah. is these yeah. are all proposals. So I think what we oh, want sorry, is sorry, yeah, you're right. So it's the next one, next button. Maybe we want my projects. And here we go. Get lab plugin modernization. Okay. So when I click it, it shows me the project and the contributor proposal. You don't see the questions yet, right? But let me find the questions. Hang on. Okay. Because I, I think they, they sent a link previously to all the questions. Okay. Give me a sec. So let me turn reminders of questions. If other questions, wait, I found it. So um, they are, let me put it in the chat here. So it's like, I, I don't think it's in the form yet because they're not open yet. Ah, okay. So that may be it, 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 that, hey, no shock that, ah, okay. <laughs> Just the questions. Good. Okay. So okay. So this is a very reasonable. So this is the midterm eval. There are the questions. And I'm just going to grab copies of those, paste them into our notes. Okay. There they are, right? Cool. So we've at least captured them. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. And okay. that's from this page. The midterm evaluation questions. Great. Okay. Yep. Anything else on midterm evaluations? Um, just the questions, maybe. But we could also talk about Docker Quick Start and uh, the building uh, Jack and Start IO with Alternative Tools project because they're directly related to uh, Docs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's. Is there one of those that you want to take first or second? What's your preference? I have no preference, but I, I I'm not really up to speed regarding the Docker Quick Start project because I wasn't present last week. So I can I can talk to about what we what Ashutosh showed us last week and what we demonstrated, the and they've made progress this week as well. So last week we looked at experimental Docker compose files and I think we looked at this one that uses a compose YAML file that has a Jenkins agent in it, and we actually ran a Jenkins agent. 
uh, with the controller and confirm that it was well behaved. Now, okay. as of this week, there's now a new pull request here that Bruno is evaluating that is attempting to implement the, the tutorial. Okay. Uh, where the tutorial is this tutorial here. Uh, whoops. Okay. They please give me a link to that one. Good. This is, and okay, the thing they're trying to replace is this horrible mess of monstrous detailed instructions on how to do Docker configuration. Okay. And their goal is to make it a single, a single command. Yeah, I realize like for these changes, we, we may need to update on our site for the building Jenkins IO project too, because like maybe later, once, once like after, after it's done. Oh yeah, well, and and certainly because building Jenkins.io with alternative tools is is not attempting to track changes on Jenkins.io. There's a lot yeah. that may need to be updated at some point in the future. There, agreed. I think so. Yeah. So, but for me, it's this one feels like it's it's looking very positive. Ashutosh's work looks really good. Okay, that's good. And new pull request for the Maven tutorial. And the the encouraging thing for me on that new Maven tutorial pull request is no more Docker in Docker. So no no need for the security risks that come with choosing to run Docker in Docker. Okay. Good. So next topic then, and so this takes, and then this week working on the presentation. So tell us more about building Jenkins.io with alternative tools. Um, so a uh, new PR has submitted for the solutions pages. So that, uh, that pending review, which is a good sign. And uh, also we have, um, I think we have some minor, minor work done on the um, on the website as well to fix the redirections so it was done i think yesterday okay at least uh, this is the preview site let's see and i should have a link to that and i yeah. don't let's see what i've done with it where is well, I guess the easiest is let me just type it into my browser. Oh, then I, I, just, I, um, I just pasted it to the chat. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, same. Okay, so we'll just embed that. Yeah. And I think if I reduce it to that, nope. Okay. If I take out the the portion there that has version specific info in it, life's easier for me. Okay, one more. Okay. And the prototype side is right here. Yeah, there's there's still some imperfections we got on the side because I I still see some broken images and broken links, but those um those will be fixed eventually. Yeah, so well, so here the the search box is or the images are working. Yeah. And and so for me that was a that was a positive. Okay. Uh, I didn't didn't check every page though. And okay, so here's another one with a, a working working image. Okay. I think now the, that's, that's an issue. Uh, that's an issue regarding one of the data tables because like, it doesn't work now because of uh, some course policy, but we can make it work if we start Chrome in a certain way to disable security like for for that instance. Only. So now, when you're talking about data tables, I'm not sure what's what's the context for the data tables. I think it's a source code um, hosting under i think let me let me try record so it's like um i don't remember where it's like under the let me check is like, it maybe in developer documentation i think it could be yeah uh, it should be under developer documentation so publishing publishing plugins also hosting 
seconds. So that table, it, it, it is working, but uh, you cannot see it like ordinarily because you have to. Uh, you because uh, so right now we're not hosting it on Jenkins.io website. Right. If we can you can use it for now. It's like it's just disabled due to some security feature. But it's working. Interesting. So so is this is this page then also broken on our preview sites? For Jenkins.io, I would assume it is. I think it was before at some point, but it's fixed now, so it's working. Oh, okay. So when I look at when I go look at a pull request here to let's pick a recent one. So the automated change log, this one. If I look at its preview site, you're saying that I should be able to in this preview site mm -hmm. find in the developer guide. Yeah, the so. let's see, it's plugin hosting. I think under, it's publishing under publishing. Publishing, okay. Publishing plugins, yep. source code hosting. Yep. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, not this one. You have to go back to Jenkins IO. Otherwise, right. Will... Okay, so that's what I was. I was so I was suspecting this would be broken, right? Uh, because yes. it's on the preview yeah. site. Because, like you said, cores, right? Yep. It's yep. not allowed to to make that request to that page. Okay, certainly if I go to Jenkins.io, it works. Okay. Let's let's prove it just to be sure, but okay. developer yeah. documentation here, publishing okay. plugins, source code hosting, there. Yeah. This one will never finish because it's never going to get the data. Yeah. And if I look for me, there I am. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. So, so the fact that that page is not working in the prototype is no different than the fact that it's not working in the preview site either. Yep. Right. This is a little different message is all, but other than that, there's no, that's not a loss of functionality. We already don't have that functionality in the preview sites. Yep. That's right. Okay, good. Anything else that you feel like we ought to to show there? Um, maybe not 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 this week. Not really. Not yet. Because I I think I think like I'm trying to push like Vendee to, to to fix all the broken links. All the broken, so we can present the, the prototype to the community. But um, I have to uh, I have to push him a bit for it. I think. Good. Okay. Very good. All right, next topic then, open pull requests of interest. So this one, Meg, is one where um, I wanted to, to get some, some insights from you, comments from you. Let's see if we've got... Now, why? Oh, right, okay. So, whoops. How does his... Okay, so this is now... Uh, all right, sorry. Here is the picture. Here is the the site's no longer building. This is a proposal from Tanu Sharma, who had done a a bunch of other work, and as part of that work, was proposing. Hmm, interesting that this new section or this empty page right now on jenkins.io have new content added oh. uh, currently it's let's look at how just how sad it looks if we look at administering kubernetes administering jenkins on kubernetes there's the page oh, i hate these things yes that's not a very satisfying page and so what uh, Tanush has proposed is, here's an outline proposed for this. Now, the problem is I can't show you, I don't think I can show you the preview because it appears that the build is broken at the moment and I haven't investigated to see why. Um, let's see. And previews work even sometimes the broken build is just details. Well, we'll see. So let's, let's see. look to see if there is a site.
Deployed to preview. Here we go. View deployment. Okay. So the documentation here, it was in system administration. Oh, is that right? Yes, administering Jenkins on Kubernetes. So here was is what um, the the first pull request, the first part of the pull request as submitted. To me, these headings look like good topics, right? Introduction and overview. Yep. Architecture and components. Yep. Installation and configuration. This one I'm not sure of because we've got a Kubernetes section already in installing. And I think it may be better to do do it there. And now I'm open to to comments. What do you think? At the very, if you're going to do that, I would link to it. Oh, good, good suggestion. Right. Okay. So, so see the yeah, very good. All right. And vice versa, um, the in, um, the installation on Kubernetes should link to this. Okay, and here's what it says. We can paste the installing Jenkins on Kubernetes link here. And that's, okay, good. All right. Yeah. Then scalability and high availability. And I suspect saying high availability is a mistake and, and should probably say fault tolerance or something else because high availability usually is interpreted to mean something different in this context than what Jenkins can support. Yeah, so is fault tolerance, everything is. Can you do something really vague like reliability or? Yeah, the okay. Title and uh, you know. Good point, okay, good. And also, but I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm too much of a weenie here. I would like to know why high availability is not not possible. I mean, you know, a brief statement, but yeah, yeah. good good question. Let's see. I think we may already have that, but let's see. Mm -hmm. High availability. Nope. That's a CDCon topic. My experience is people misuse these tools so much that I don't even know which is the proper meaning for them, you know? Uh-huh, right. Yep. I mean, in Kubernetes, by, by definition, gives you a certain amount of high reliability because if a pod goes sour, it throws another one up there. And for some people, that's high reliability. I'm high availability. I'm happy. Right, right. Well, and yeah, so the, let's see. This talks about, about, well, maybe not. I'll have to, I'll have to yeah. go digging. Good point. It's, it's to to make it clear that hey, this does not give you instantaneous failover. If a pod dies, there will be time to restart the pod to start mm -hmm. a new pod. Okay, so back to our prototype site. Let's see. One one comment you made, Meg, was let's be sure that the installation and configuration section links to rather than inserting into this section all of the alternatives right because the and, alternatives are already in the install section right and so that would mean the first bullet goes away i assume the second one does i mean verify what's in that installing right and and this wait, one i think just, the installing does it go into configuration? This needs to be put together with install and configure, and it sure doesn't. It at least in the past, it hasn't. Let's double check. As far as I know, installing on Kubernetes just talks about okay, how do you install with Helm, and it gets you far enough to have it installed, but okay. it doesn't do anything beyond basic installation. Okay. So maybe that section then should just be configuration and the third sentence should be for instructions for installing go to link. Right. That's what my thinking is, is that we probably want to tell people, look, to do a system administration on Kubernetes. That's this is the place now. OK, 
question here there's the the problem with long title like this is i'm very near overflowing is this should it just be kubernetes how what's the uh, what about jenkins on kubernetes it's under system administration oh uh, uh, good even better right okay and people are idiots they won't get it but it's technically true and if they can't think for a minute well i'm not in a sympathetic sometimes i feel kind to people who won't think but today's not one of those days all right uh i was gonna look at our prototype of the new site where is it where did it go now it is here okay on the new site how does it look so we've got system administration administ yeah see it's it's already wrapped Wrapping, the text yeah. here and for me that's that's not not what i would prefer and i don't like having system administration and then something underneath that be administration right right i'm in if, administration you know yeah exactly um, so you'd be okay if this thing were switched from administering jenkins on kubernetes to jenkins on kubernetes that works for me what does it sound like to you chris I think I would like Jenkins and Kubernetes shorter. Okay, good. All right. Let me make a, a few notes here while we're here. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jenkins on Kubernetes rather than rather than administering Jenkins on Kubernetes. And then it's let's see, the other piece was um the install and configuration becomes just a configuration and the first sentence is a, for installation instructions go to right okay good um and then i would all and i would also say i would hit that the installation chapter and and add a link to for configuration information go here good okay very good and he has and he had some other bullet lists in there that don't belong here but if he wants to while he's at it he could review that installation chapter and make sure that well and I think it's it crucial back. that that he interview review the installation chapter because it's largely unchanged from two or three years ago okay. you can be confident there are errors in that now given how much Kubernetes has evolved mm -hmm. so he can take ownership of that content we just don't want to duplicate it right exactly or worse yet have got have things that disagree with each other exactly yep um okay anything let's let's go back and back do some here. oh sorry go ahead no i said yeah let's go back and look at it again oh yes. um scalability and high availability I was suggesting I, a, a more generic name like reliability and right. reliability then talk about what means what what is high availability what is fault tolerance um what do you get and what can you not get yeah good okay so so for instance um pod pod so yeah so pod death pod or loss of a pod requires start of a new pod some downtime during the restart right? right it's just the true reality is you don't have this is not a zero downtime configure setup okay okay and various things i haven't thought about those things it's not on the tip of my head of what fault tolerance stuff but mm-hmm you know so let's see um configuration management okay how is that different from just configuration 
Thank you. Okay. I yes. might put that closer to configuration if it wasn't combined. Well, or given given the amount of content that is removed from this, should they just be combined, like you said? Configuration. I mean, configuration. I if configuration, I would put the configuration management content. I wouldn't, you know, managing Jenkins configurations and plugins on Kubernetes, including fig maps and secrets. Oh, I don't know. I think of those as configure. Okay, yeah. But. Yeah, so for me, this is they're they're both crucial items, but I think they really belong up here they're as a single section. Yeah, that's configuration, and those are part of configuration. Okay. Combine the configuration management and installation and configuration. Except installation configuration is now only configuration. Right. Into a single section configuration section with an opening link to the installation guide. Okay. Now, don't we have there? We got the third bullet for that link from installation. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we put make a sub point under that and say include the content defined for configuration management in this section oh right right come i see what you're saying right so that's this here yeah got it okay uh, okay then you could reword it because it doesn't make sense because we just said installation scoring but Okay, whatever. You know what you mean. Wait a sec. So isn't it isn't it what we're really saying here is that this if you're saying include the information spec for configuration management in this section. Yes. And then like that. Yeah. Okay. Fewer words to read. Okay, good. Okay, let's go look at some more. All right. Oh, it's so much fun to tear apart somebody else's work, and I don't have to do the work when we're done. Um, monitoring and logging. Okay. And I guess that, yeah, we understand that's going to have a link to regular logging, troubleshooting. Mm, right, right. Yeah. Well, and let's, yeah, so that it's a good point there are there are a number of these things which are which have general purpose troubleshooting and are not specific to kubernetes how would we want to handle that is so troubleshooting for instance there's the general purpose troubleshooting information that's right here uh-huh and oh except that's not oh this one diagnosing errors obtaining a thread dump is is this a place where should should the kubernetes specific information link to this i would think so and then i mean first question is on kubernetes is this relevant certainly it is okay at least out of memory errors very much so because kubernetes pods uh, can be defined to have an upper bound on their memory use and ah. and it's it's very possible very very much and does this include remediation or just how you diagnose it? Uh, well, it certainly is going to be different. On no, it it tells you how to huh. how to do the remediation with. Let's see, where is it? Analyzing the heap dump. No, where's the? It oddly enough, this one doesn't tell you what arguments to set, but there certainly are Java command line arguments that will tell you that will increase the increase the size of the heap. Okay, and then what is the story on Kubernetes? Do you do that or do you increase the size of your replica or? I think you have to do both, right? You have okay. to tell, you have to tell Kubernetes, size me this, size the pod this way or size the, the container this way and then tell Jenkins, tell the Java command line inside Jenkins and size yourself to use that. 
Okay. Or, or no, 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 no. Wait a sec. I take it back. Recent Java versions will automatically read the Kubernetes assigned memory value and will use that. Mm. So, so there may not be anything they need to do in Kubernetes, uh, just size it larger. I still think that's worth. I mean, that's, that's and because there are people who are running old versions of Jenkins that look at the modern doc and it doesn't hurt, you know, to say an older, you know, with older versions of Jen and how far back on Java do you have to get to you where, to where you'd have to do that manually? Uh, I think all the Java 11 versions we support have it. And so, and we've no longer support Java 8. So I think we're fine there. It, but I, I wouldn't mind saying that Java 11 and forward do this for you. you don't yeah, have to except that a lot, it's just a hint. We, but we don't, we don't support anything older than Java 11. Okay. Um, can I run Java 8 agents? Uh, no, no, you cannot. Okay, can it have to be that? Java 11 agents. Okay. So, uh, but let's put a general concept link from the sections from the Kubernetes specific sections to relevant general purpose sections. Yeah. And let me put some examples here. So purpose pages, um, troubleshooting, for instance, should link troubleshooting Kubernetes should link to the general purpose page. Yeah. In addition to Kubernetes. And then what, I mean, I don't know what your user profile, you know, if it's Kubernetes still a small part of your user base or are we getting to a point where as many people are more running Kubernetes than not Kubernetes? I, that I don't know. I don't have a, I don't have a, any data that's at least known to me to tell me what fraction are running Kubernetes. Right. Certainly there are lots of questions about Kubernetes in various forums. Right. Cause there's one option is that the out of memory section says what it says. And then when it tells you how to fix it, it says, if you're running on Kubernetes, do this and this. The other is that you have trouble shooting under the Kubernetes section that say out of memory errors are discussed here and they can happen to you on Kubernetes. Here's how you remediate them on Kubernetes. See, and I would think we want the second mode because Kubernetes out of memory errors are solved with a different technique than we use on a Linux installation that used the Debian package or the RPM package. Uh huh. Because when we're using systemd, we configure additional memory a different way than when we're using Kubernetes. But let's go back and look at the out of memory section again. I want to see how much else it says besides remediation. Okay. It's a small part of what's there. So this is telling you why they happen and how you diagnose it. So. <laughs> You're going to leave this material as it is and reference from, say, if you want to know what out of memory errors are and how to diagnose them here, and then here's the remediation. That was my thought is, is for, for more details on out of memory errors, see this page. But if you've run out of memory, here's how you increase memory, memory allocation on a Kubernetes, on a Kubernetes cluster. Right. And of course the ones I'm not sure I'm not running Jenkins these days. Um, but what we're seeing is a lot of times Kubernetes doesn't tell you that it's out of memory. You just, your pods don't start. Or, or, or they get killed. Forever. Yeah. Or they just sit there forever and there's no message or anything. Right. Um, but of course, weird out of memory has always caused weird error messages because it's out of memory. Mm -hmm. So Okay. Yeah. And you can't do this, but try to encourage reviewers to review the existing docs as well as the new and make sure they all fit together in some graceful way. Oh, oh that's good. Right. Well, so, and that's, that's a good one. 
I mean, reviewers being what they are, one thing is to go into the old guide and add a couple of line breaks or something, which will pull that text into the PR. Right. Compare existing content and Kubernetes content for improvements in both places. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Okay. Well, that gives them enough to. Oh yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to spend time to to describe those in in the pull request, and I need to figure out why this pull request is failing to build. All right. Okay, Anything Aaron. else on Kubernetes? We've probably beat that one enough. All right. So the next one is on best practices, and I've not made any progress on this one. It's It needs more content. The additional content is just hasn't had time for me and won't get time for days or weeks. Four months, whatever, yeah. Oh, I hope it'll be sooner than that, but yeah, <laughs> it'll be a while. Next, last topic for me before we close for today is I'm going to be gone the 24th of, or the 14th of July and the 20th of July. I propose we just cancel for those two weeks unless somebody else wants to take on. Chris could, for instance, lead the meeting uh, if he's available. I think the only critical things are probably GSOC and Chris is handling those, right? Right. Oh, and Chris is gone now. So, yeah, I'm happy to skip meetings. Um, Beck, um, conflict, in, which PR of Meg's is still live enough to be worth resolving a conflict? And I'm just kidding. Oh, the, it's, uh, the, conflict, the conflict that was in it is already resolved. So okay, it doesn't... Good. It doesn't, it doesn't affect at all. All it was, was I went in and. I'm just curious it, which one it is. Yeah, it was the one, was it this one? I know what we can do. We can look at it this way. We can look at it by author. Ah. Let the software do the work ah. for us. Oh, no, no, I take it back. It was not that one. It was this one, script oh. security. And what the what what had changed, there was some conflict in something or other down here. And I made a few changes, right? Removed some trailing spaces, removed a paragraph. And oh, that this was the one that was the surprise is Daniel had given feedback that said, hey, instead of calling the file scripted in the chapter, we should call it scripting. And that change was applied, but then the file itself was not renamed. And so I renamed it. Oh, okay. So now this uh, this is actually visible now. We could actually look at it in the context of the deployment because it will show us. And I think it's under securing Jenkins and security for scripts so here's the page and but it it hasn't had changes applied based on comments that are in the in the reviewer pull request or in the reviewer I'd be comments. doing that i kind of haven't i've stopped watching these i just figured they were all dead but should i go in and look at those comments or if you if you well let's let's look at them together briefly mm -hmm. just to see if now we i think... worry it's been so long since i've been in that you know i used to have all this security stuff in my head and i'm well and and that may may justify that hey let's let's leave it to somebody else to take it up because yeah. if we look at the comments let's read the comments really quickly just to see okay Ah, uh, yes. Okay. This is one that that they had said very uncommon. And I think I'm prone to just delete this text entirely because I... this is focused on groovy scripts, not on not on anything else. Okay, yeah. I always write to put when in doubt I put it in because it's easier to delete than for somebody to remember, oh, you didn't mention this. So. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So this one, I think what he's saying here is this one should not be in the list because 
they're not really groovy in the sense that the the when executing pipeline we're executing the domain specific language that is based on groovy whereas when we're executing groovy scripts in the script console they're really executing groovy full full groovy so right. but so what this is really saying is they're all right but we cleaned up i mean people people when i was around people were always saying that you know pipelines were just written in groove the old pipelines were written in groovy right and you know we went through at that time and went through the docs and made sure that it said using a language that is similar to groovy or whatever i don't know the hoi polloi out there i think a lot of them still think that scripted part i don't know okay but yeah i think given given daniel's comments here this looks that, like it's just a rewrite which he just did there well this is at least a restructure right uh -huh. i'm not sure it's a rewrite but it certainly is a restructure and okay yeah this the basic council don't ever disable the sandbox don't yeah. do script approvals unless you are very serious about it and know exactly what you're doing. Uh-huh. Which isn't going to stop anybody, but at least we've warned them. All right. And if you're confident, there is a file of PR and okay. Good. Yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> Just know I love this okay good so yeah because yeah, that one i think was one that i wasn't real sure about it was just i threw together what i could find hoping we would get just exactly this so mm -hmm. okay so we've got some feedback that we could take on it and but i think i think you're wise to say hey having you do the rework on this is probably a bad choice because you've been away from this kind of stuff long enough that it hey, I not... don't know about changes that have happened and right. Westy, but Kevin, but I'm thinking Kevin could probably take this on and put it together in no time. Yeah, exactly. Good idea. Okay. So the script, let's see, what was it called? Scripting and uh, scripting and security. And let's put the pull request there. PR something or other. Okay, 4693. As comments that kevin or mark could revise could use to revise it further right uh, and maybe even get it published good all right coolness thank you any other topics meg before we end for today so i'll cancel no, so the july 14. next week and um yeah right. no do you want to stop the recording and then i'll ask you what you're doing sure yeah absolutely so